sorry here we will be talking about the antibiotic phosphomycin which has been in use since the 1970s and has renewed interest because of its activity against many gram negative and gram positive resistant bugs it acts by cell wall inhibition inhibits the formation of n acetyl muramic acid it is one of the two components of the peptidoglycan layer the other being n acetyl glucosamine and so it interferes with the peptidoglycan layer which is present in both gram positive and gram negative bacteria and so the spectrum of the antibiotic includes both of them this step works a step before the cross linking of the peptidoglycans which is inhibited by the beta lactam antibiotics if we look at the profile the remarkable thing is activity against enterococci including vancomycin resistant enterococci and staphylococcus aureus including mrsa the antibiotic covers very well e coli klebsiella proteus enterobacter cytobacter and seracea the two bugs for which it should not be used and might be considered as inherently resistant is pseudomonas and acinetobacter so when these two are identified phosphomycin should not be a part of a therapy another remarkable thing about phosphomycin is its ability to work on biofilms which can be a concern when devices are in place and its ability to penetrate deep tissues and so it is active against deep seated infections like in bones muscles joints central nervous system it has good penetration it is almost exclusively excreted by the kidneys and can be recovered in the urine for two or more days so it has a very ho long half life and that is why we have the once single dose for uncomplicated uti for women and we have used it for prophylaxis dosing it two or three times a week so we can use the antibiotic with longer in intervals in between because of its ability to achieve good concentration for a long period of time it is available both as oral formulation and iv formulation the one which is available for oral consumption is phosphomycin trometamol it has an absorption of around 40% which is better than what was seen with phosphomycin calcium which was available earlier and this should always be advised to be taken in the fasting state because it is in the fasting that it is very good absorbed the oral absorption can decrease once we try to increase the dose and this is one problem the commonly used oral sachets have phosphomycin equivalent of 3 grams so if you try to increase the dose from there the absorption component comes down a little bit and also when we compare the oral and iv formulation the concentration reached by the iv formulation are much much higher in the tissues and in the serum as compared to the oral formulation so when you are using phosphomycin in sepsis you want very high concentrations in the blood and in tissues the iv formulation is preferred one thing to remember is that 30% of the iv formulation is sodium and this can have huge implications because the dose of phosphomycin given iv is somewhere between 12 to 16 grams per day and some people have gone as much as 24 grams a day for deep seated infections so at 12 grams a day you will have 3.6 grams of sodium load every day which can be significant for people who have issues with their heart with the liver or patients who are already hyponatremic so hyponatremia is a concern and we should monitor the sodium regularly it is believed to have synergism with the beta lactams it also works on the cell wall beta lactams also work on the cell wall but they act at different steps with carbapenems with cholestine which disrupts the outer membrane and then it acts on the peptidoglycan layer with tg cycline 
which works at the ribosomal level vancomycin another drug which is active at the cell wall so phosphomycin frequently find itself in partnership with many of these antibiotics and generally the circumstances in which it is given reserved for very sick patients who have multi drug resistant bugs generally it would be found in a combination therapy with another agent one thing is that resistance although reported one of the bugs which shows very little resistance is e coli so if you have an e coli which is resistant to other drugs phosphomycin would probably one of the best agents to use generally used in combination with other agents and you can switch over to the oral formulations only when cystitis is an issue or a catheter related urinary tract infection is an issue but if you have uh, sepsis with blood culture positivity it would be prudent to use the iv formulation